Hi everybody, it's Jamie from the Marvel Database and the Comic Book Showcase. I have a special a special guest and a special episode for you today. Uh, I'm with Blake Northcott, who's actually a, a fellow Canadian and an author uh, of a new book that we're going to talk spend some time talking about today. Um, the book is called Funnel Empire, and it's part of the third book of a series. Uh, so we'll get right to it. Uh, Blake, welcome. Hi there. Thanks for having me, Jamie. Absolutely. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your your uh, the new book you've just written. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I'm um, an author from Canada, <laughs> a fellow Canadian, um, but I also write editorials and reviews for Comic Book Resources and CBS Man Cave Daily. So you might have seen those around. Um, and actually, just last week, Mark Miller brought me on board to Miller World to be a brand ambassador. Uh, well, I'll be overseeing his new forum as well as the extended section that will start appearing in all of the Miller World comics starting in 2015. So that's exciting, kind of a new thing going on. Um, but I do want to talk about my book, Final Empire, which is available right now on Kickstarter. Okay, so the concept for Arena Mode was basically like The Hunger Games meets Marvel and DC. Um, it's, you know, that same conversation that every comic book fan has at some point in their life, um, you know, would Superman beat the Hulk, or could Wonder Woman take on Lady Sith? Um, so I crafted this world 30 years in the future where superhumans are real and they're competing, um, not so much in a forced death match, but a sporting competition that just happens to be really violent. Um, you know, I am a big MMA fan. And when it was getting popular, um, but not mainstream yet, there were these insane media personalities comparing it to like arena fights and from gladiatorial times, you know, where like the Christians are fighting lions and stuff like that. And I thought that was funny, but at the same time, sports have been getting increasingly violent, whether it's, you know, football, hockey, MMA. Um, Plus, there are so many, like, extreme sports. So I just thought, you know, at this pace, who knows what will we be watching for sports in 30 years? Like, who knows, right? So that was kind of my um, my concept for jumping into the arena mode universe. What would you say is the tone of the book? Is it is it a darker series, or would you say it's more realistic, trying to talk about um, the characters more? Or what would you say is the tone? Um, you know, the tone is, you know, I, I, when I was writing it, I was thinking I want everyone to be able to jump right in and feel like they could relate to the characters. So, you know, one of the main themes in the book is self-motivation um, and overcoming kind of like apathy. Uh, the main character, Mox, is nearing 30 years old and he's looking back on his 20s and he's thinking, what have I accomplished, you know, since high school? And what's next? And this is, I don't know, it's different for everybody, but at some point, you know, in your 20s, everyone kind of has this, like, epiphany. Like, holy crap, um, I'm not a kid anymore, you know? And it's a scary moment. Um, and there's no one to hold your hand and walk you through that. Um, you just have to figure it out on your own and kind of roll with it and see where, you're getting, where life is taking you. And I think that's a turning point um, for most people that never really gets explored. So that was kind of like my core um, uh, theme, I should say, in the book. And did you, did you draw any from personal experiences other than your interest in mixed martial arts? Did you draw any personal themes or feelings into the characters in the book? Well, you know, I, I myself had that, that same epiphany. Like I reached, you know, 30 years old and you're kind of like, whoa, like, life is going so fast, what's happening? You look, you compare yourself to your friends or your other, you know, people in the industry and think, wow, they've accomplished a lot, or what am I doing sitting here today? Like, what could I be doing? So I think those kind of ideas going through, rolling through your head really are what push the main character, um, you know, mocks through the arena mode and through the competition. So, yeah, of course, I mean, I felt those same things, so I thought this would be kind of a universal theme to um, to write about in the book. So the book itself is a little bit different in sort of format. I mean, it's not exactly a prose-only book, and it's not exactly a comic book. It's kind of um, a nice mix. It's got uh, some interesting art in there, and, and can you tell us a little bit about why you chose the format you did? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, being a comic book fan, I always felt like seeing the artwork paired with the story was like a visual representation of the story, it made it more real to me. Like, I'm a visual learner, so you can read something and be in your head, but also seeing something, you know, art-related or artwork is always an addition to the book. Um, so I was a huge fan of, you know, like so many artists, and I thought, why not, like, incorporate that into the story? Um, it's never really been done sort of in a novel. Like, there's graphic novels, which are very, in my opinion, very graphic. There's tons of artwork to, to wrap your brain around. This is more just more of, like, busts and um, quick sketches and things like that. So I thought, you know, there could be a lot of artists who'd be interested in not having to commit that much time but wanting to be a part of, like, a project like this. So it's not like I'm asking them to do an entire sequential art page or something, but... Um, you know, just doing something quick and really um, inspiring from the characters was exciting to them too. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm, I I also like consuming both halves of the, of the picture, if you will, something that you can show me uh, that you can't describe in just words. Did you have some of the art preconceived before you began writing the book, or did you have even some of the artists in, in mind already? Um, I mean... You know, I, I have to say, like, the artists I, I was thinking that I could maybe get on board, like, it blew me away how many people that I expressed the idea to would write back and say they were interested. I just wasn't expecting, like, you know, I'm a huge fan of Rat Queens, so I asked Rock Upchurch, and um, I think David Nakayama is incredible, so I asked him. You know, I floated the idea by Steve McNiven in a, you know, he's like a comic book legend, so, of course, I wanted to know if he would be a part of it. Um, a couple people I just kind of got lucky with. I happened to be friends with Comic Book Girl 19 since 2012, um, where we met in Los Angeles at Stan Lee's Kamikaze. So not only is she, like, a YouTube star, and she's also an artist. And this just worked out because she was looking for a kind of an artistic project to sink her teeth into, so she wanted to be a part of it. Um, but when someone agrees to contribute... Then I match them up kind of with the character in the book that I need illustrated. Like, for example, I wanted um, an otherworldly character, um, Lolly with Brinja. So I asked Natasha Allegri, Allegri from Adventure Time if she would want to design her because I felt like they were like a good match. So that's how that kind of evolved. <laughs> Well, it's definitely an interesting uh, approach to do it. I, I, I think it's been working out, and I can't wait to read this book to see how it, it turns out. Um, so one thing I, you've been quoted as, as saying about your books is that um, uh, RPG fans will love these specifically. Why, why would you say that? Um, well, there, I think that it's interesting how in this situation there's going to be the RPG with characters that are specifically designed from like the Marvel and DC artists. I don't know if there's, I haven't seen any that are out like that, um, and I just think it's a really interesting perspective to be able to uh, have these characters that, like I mentioned before, you know, like if the Hulk was fighting someone, what, how would that play out? So it's kind of like being able to, you know, in your own way, enjoy the game and play it out that way with these characters. Well, that makes sense, absolutely. And and these these books are available. Actually, the first two have been available for three years and two years. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's been ongoing. Uh, we did a I did a Kickstarter for Arena Mode and Salter Attrition. So I really just have um, you know, being it's my third time doing this now, I kind of feel like I have a grasp more right now on what kind of like things the fans want to see, are interested in getting as stretch goals, things like that. Uh, I know like how much work is going to be involved in getting the books out, considering I've done that before. You know, I know a lot of people sometimes worry with Kickstarter, am I going to actually get the things that I'm buying? And that's something that's been really, um, I've taken to heart, because I myself am a Kickstarter contributor, and I know that feeling of, I hope that this is going to work out, I'm going to get my book, right, or whatever the product is. So I've been really mindful about that and keeping all my Kickstarter um you know, supporters updated on the process is really important to me. Well, I, I personally feel the same way. I, I'm definitely concerned about buying 
something that doesn't exist yet online. It's bad enough buying something. <laughs> it's bad enough buying something that you know exists from a you know Amazon or whatnot. And they still get it wrong, but um, that is a question. Um, that is not a question here. You've actually blown away the sort of the goal. Uh, I think you're nearing triple. Uh, the the uh, intended original goal. So, can you tell us a little bit about more about the Kickstarter project and some of the goodies that you were uh, planning, and and uh, what's your, some of your favorites? Sure. Um, so basically, it's a novel that includes the artwork um, throughout by Marvel and DC artists, as well as um, illustrators from you know Image, Boom Studios, and Dark Horse. Um, I have already passed a bunch of stretch goals. So along with the book, um, all the backers will receive stickers, um, an amazing bookmark that I think is really cute, uh, an unabridged audiobook, as well as a limited edition um, print of Destiny Nicholson cosplaying as Brinja. Um, now we just reached that stretch goal yesterday, so I was so excited to pass that mark because I was really hoping we could get her on board for sure. So now I feel great telling everybody, you know, you're for sure going to get these things with your book. Um, so it does run this week until Sunday night at 9 o'clock. So if anybody else is interested, you know, if they um, want to get on board and get a copy of the book, they'll get all those included with it. Absolutely. We'll include links to the Kickstarter project and to your pages so it's nice and easy for everyone uh, watching to find. Um, tell me, actually, one thing you mentioned that's interesting. Tell me about the audiobook. The audiobook. Uh, yeah, I think I mean I think that's a really interesting way, another way to kind of experience the novel because it's very theatrical. Uh, we've got Kiri Callahan is um, you know she does such a fantastic job. She just blows me away with her performance, and she does you know different voices and accents, and it really is very um, it's auditory for your senses to take it in in a different way, but she is very theatrical and brings those characters just to life. So I think it's a very, it's a very unique um, stretch goal, I think, to have because a lot of places you have to pay for this stretch goal. It can be $20 or more, right, just to get an audiobook. Um, so to include it here, I think, is a, is a pretty neat uh, extra. I, I think so, too, actually. Um, so you've told us all about yourself and your project. Um, is there anything else coming up that we should be looking forward to from uh, from Blake? Uh, well, in two, you know, in 2015, I have some ideas um, for a new series that could end up being a comic book. It's kind of a bizarre idea, so I might not go the self-publishing route again. Um, I think I, I, sorry, I should say I would like to go self-publishing again. Um, I find that dealing with like uh, publishers, they try to really pigeonhole your story, and that's difficult for me because a lot of my ideas just don't fit within like this is just a sci-fi or this is just a horror or something like that. I really like to combine different elements, um, so that's part of the reason why I really like the Kickstarter self-publishing route that I can, you know, just be really crazy zany with all my ideas and I don't have to conform to anyone in a publishing um, office. But um, I do have an idea though, uh, I want to kind of get away a little bit from superhero and dive a little bit more into the occult. Um, and this time I would really like to write something from a female perspective. Mostly all my other books um, have had a male protagonist which for some reason, I don't know why I've never done a female yet, so that is something I'd like to try. Um, and I have a goal to write for either Marvel or DC before 2015 is over, so I'm watching the phone to see if, you know, Jim Lee or Joe Quesada, they want to call me up anytime, day or night. I'm ready. <laughs> I would love to read something that you've written for a comic book uh, to dive right into the, the Marvel Earth 616 universe or the, the new... Uh, DC Universe as well. I'd love to see that. So, um, thank you very much for joining us. You can find Blake, um, again, uh, CBS Man Cave Daily, Comic Book Resources, and now Miller World does, I just found out. So that's fantastic. And we'll include links to all of uh, your websites and, and the, of course, the Kickstarter project. So thank you very much for joining us, Blake. Great. Thanks so much for having me, Jamie.